Welcome back to Tip the Talent Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today we're going to talk a little bit about Derrick Henry. Everyone in the Raven flock talking about Derrick Henry. If you look at it on Twitter, Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry, Derrick Henry this, Derrick Henry that. Derrick Henry seems to be our answer to all the running, well, not the running back questions, but the, the running issues from the team. And it stems from the running backs only getting six carries in the playoff game versus the Kansas City Chiefs. So, the, the logic is to throw an all-star type running back in the room, and then the coaches can't justify not giving that person six carries. So the logic is, Derrick Henry's back there. You can't justify not giving Derrick Henry six carries in the, in the playoffs. So let's just put a big name back there, and bam, that fixes the running backs only getting six carries. Nice logic. Is it going to work? Mm, maybe. And it's not just the fans saying that. RG3 put out a video. He has a TikTok saying that Derrick Henry fits the Ravens' lifestyle. If you haven't seen the TikTok, go, go to RG3's. I think it's on his Instagram and his TikTok. Check it out. Couple that with the fact that we almost had Derrick Henry during the season. Tried to make a trade for him during the season. I think the people, the brass at Tennessee Titans kind of nixed it at the last minute. And then every time I see Earl Thomas, you know, I think, I mean, Derrick Henry, I think about that stiff arm of Earl Thomas. I mean, he stepped on the man so hard, had him turned around, and you really ain't seen Earl Thomas since then. You, you saw Derrick Derek Henry step on Earl Thomas. Then the next time you saw Earl Thomas was when he had the issues with his brother. And we all know how that went. So I ain't seen Earl Thomas come back from that step on him yet. So <laughs> Derrick Henry step on that man to the shadow realm. But again, they, they, the, the, the premise from, from everybody in the Ravens block, but well, not everybody, but most people is, throw Derrick Henry in the situation, and the coaches can't justify not running the ball with the running back six times. I, for one, kind of skeptical. So it got my brain turning. Does he fit what we do? I initially don't think so because I think we're getting to a more of a zone scheme. And I mean inside zone slash outside zone. And he's a bigger, heavier back. So when I look at Derrick Henry, I think, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, whatever he is, 240-pounder. I think of a big downhill runner. And I know he's older, uh, 30, right at 30, right at 31 years old. And is he even still feared like he used to be? Because we all know the, the stiff on the Earl, the stiff on the Josh Norman, the, the choke slam he does on DBs on a regular. Is he even still feared like he used to be? So I'm wondering, does he fit what the Ravens need at this point in time? Got my brain turning. So I went to go to PFF to kind of see what they were running, you know, over the Tennessee Titans this year. Because I know on PFF you can look at if they run zone plays, if they run gap plays. The main the main zone plays are inside zone and outside plays. The main gap plays are power and counter. And, yeah, there are variations of, of each type of run. But from PFF, he ran 160 uh, zone plays versus 119 gap plays. So he ran mostly zone over in Tennessee. Now my next thing was – did he get explosive runs off these plays? Let's go check and see. So looking at the film, again, I, it, my mind was wondering, like, how does Derrick Henry look getting in and out of breaks as far as us running zone stuff and me thinking him being a, a gap runner with his size? And we know when they had Arthur Blank, Arthur Smith, my bad. Not Arthur Blank, my bad. I know Arthur Smith was the coach. Arthur Blank's the owner. My bad. I messed up. They ran a lot of inside and outside zone. And I didn't know if the Tennessee Titans still did that type of stuff. So I went to go find some of his explosives and let's see what he what he does with them. This is um, some kind of zone. This is a zone concept. This is, let's see. This is inside zone or duo. I think it's duo. Because you get your double team right here. With, you get this double team right here. And if it was another defensive lineman, they would have doubled up there. But since it's only one and he fanned out, he's going to climb right now. So they're going to work to that. So I think this is duo. And you can correct me if I'm wrong in, in the uh, comment section. 
but they got it blocked up. He sticks that foot in the ground and gets north and south. And see, this was the issue that I had with him. I was thinking, like, he couldn't change direction like this being that big. You see those little subtle movements, you know, in the in the runs? I didn't think he could do that. I thought because of his size and his age, that was that that skill was getting away from him. This is versus us right here. They're running power right here. So this is um this is not a zone run. This is power. They got him as the, the quarterback running a little wildcat. Which is another thing that, you know, if you had Derrick Henry, you you get this option. This is the option you get when you get Derrick Henry on your team. You don't have to put your quarterback in in some of these situations. You can put your running back back there. So this is an added plus to having Derrick Henry. And if you remember in the playoff game, we ran something similar to this with Lamar at quarterback and got about on fourth down and got about 25 yards. This is a gap run right here. That's one of his explosives. This is against us also. I think this is the fake reverse, I think. They're faking that reverse right there, which kind of froze um, Hamilton, Queen, and Roquan. He kept it, and now he's, he got these two blocking, these two blocking, and he got head full of steam. And Marcus ain't really want to tackle because Marcus was on that bad shoulder. He's just trying to throw that shoulder in there. So this is a gimmick. So this really probably even should have been on it. That was a gimmick. That was a gimmick play. More duo. Zone run. Duels a zone run. It's your double teams. You got your double team here. Your double team here. You got a solo on Pierce. So one of these guys should come off and get Queen. One of them should come off and get Roquan. That's what's happening. Now he just got to pick a hole. Now, everything's blocked up. It's, it's all single blocks, all solo blocks. He got to find an open gap now. He finds it, bounces it. Again, Marcus really can't or don't want to tackle at this point because of that shoulder. He gets in the touchdown. But again, this is the stuff that I didn't think he could do yet. Well, I thought he couldn't do any more, sorry. Like, get there and, and change in directions like that and still be at top end speed. This is what I'm, this is what I'm wondering. Like, when when is this skill going to fall off for him? This is versus uh, the Falcons. See, like, this one right there, he really didn't have to do anything right here. He just hit it downhill. Like, this right here is just blocked up perfectly. He just hit, hit it straight downhill. They blocked it up wonderfully. Hey, straight downhill. Don't have to change directions or anything. I don't know how much of that he's going to get if he were to play with us next year. How much, like, because we don't know what's going to happen. Like, we don't know what's going to happen here or here. We know Ryan, you know, Ryan ended the season not hurt, so he can rehab and what's healthy and then whatever is hurting can get better. Uh, honestly, the same thing with Morgan Moser. He can, he wasn't hurt per se, but we know he got shoulder issue. I think it was a shoulder. So he can work on that in the off season and come back as healthy as possible. But we don't know what's going to happen with Simpson. Uh, they chose not to re-sign KZ, so he's probably going to hit the open market. Simpson's probably going to hit the open market. You got Salah, you got Ben Cleveland, you got um, Voorhees who was injured all of last year. We don't know what's going to go on with these guards. So the, the best o lineman is probably going to be right here for us. And so I don't know how much of plays you're going to get like this to do this. So that's why I said in, in the watch column, you got to, you're going to have to do something. And this is versus the Steelers. This is the inside zone. And this is a good job of changing direction right here. Good job of getting those shoulders square. Jump cut there, stick that foot in the ground. Get north and south, another little subtle jump cut, then change direction right there. So it's a good job of from going, getting downhill right here. That's a change of direction. It's another change of direction and another change of direction and, and adding a little burst on it at the end. It's a damn good job right there. 
This is versus the Saints. This early in the season. I think maybe even first game. Maybe. And that's perfect right there. Perfectly blocked. That's easy. Now, this is this is what we used to seeing. This is what we used to seeing him do to DBs. Yeah. That, this is what happened to Earl Thomas, and we ain't seen him since. Shadow round. Quantum round. Marcus May went down there to see Kane the Conqueror. That's what we use. But again, this is perfectly blocked too. I got a little sidetracked. He's untouched because this is perfectly blocked. Look, nobody even touched him. How much of that is he going to get with us? I'd like to say a lot if he was on our team. But we got to be realistic. Got to be realistic. Versus the Chargers. More outside zone. Again, we, we're, we're going to be an outside zone team. And the thing is, he looks good doing this. So he could fit what we do. Like this right here, this this looks this is a perfect example of like, just imagine this being eight, this being Henry. Like this dude can't come, he can't fly down the line like that if this is Lamar. He can't. See how he flying down the line? He can't do that if this is Lamar. He gotta protect this backside. Cause if Lamar come out of this like with the ball. The opportunities are boundless. So he can't just fly down the line. And then that's one less person in the box that Henry can maneuver through and do that. Again, look, look at that. Look at him, look, look at him being able to maneuver through all that and work his way through the traffic. That's a perfect example of how he could fit the offense right there. Perfect example. On the outside zone. Another example of outside zone, but this is just a toss. Running through arm tackles. So as far as the, the scheme and us going to a zone scheme, he definitely could fit that. Now we need to see is how often do we have these explosives. Let's let's get into how often he, he has ex explosive plays in the game, and we'll go from there. So now after looking at those runs, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe Derrick Henry does still fit. Because he's getting in and out of, you know, getting in and out of those runs, getting in and out of those breaks, and he's, you know, hitting the hole pretty hard. So let's see how often he does that. So that's where the situation changes. How often does Derrick Henry have these explosives? And explosives are 15 plus yard runs. And you kind of need that so you don't have to have 14, 15, 16 play drives because you need explosive passes or runs to get you some chunk plays because nobody, and I mean no team can consistently run the ball, well not run the ball, have 13, 14, 15 play drives. You got to have some explosives in there some way, somewhere. So this is what I found out from Derrick Henry. Out of all his carries, he only has explosive runs for 5.7% of the time. 5.7% of the time. So I also got to think some more then. So if Derrick Henry, Henry only has explosive runs 5.7% of the time, there are some more names on their free agency list that can potentially come to Baltimore. Some names came up. DeAndre Swift from um, the Eagles. So let's take a look at his explosive run rate. 4.8. Okay, that's less than Derrick Henry, so let's move on to the next guy. Another name we threw out there, Tony Pollard from the Cowboys. He's a free agent. 4.3, so still less than, than Derrick Henry. The name I personally thought about was uh, Saquon Barkley. In my mind, I'm thinking Saquon Barkley or bust when it comes to this running back thing. 4.8 in his explosive runs. Now, there is another name out there that has been thrown around, and, you know, it, it's kind of dying down. You don't hear it as much. It's Josh Jacobs. Now, again, we talked about Derrick Henry at 5.7, uh, DeAndre Swift at 4.8, Tony Pollard at 4.3, and Saquon Barkley at 4.8. Josh Jacobs' explosive rate is 14.1. He has 33 explosive runs last year, and that means 15-plus yards per run. He has 33 of them. If I'm not mistaken, Henry had 16. Josh Jacobs almost doubled Henry's explosive runs, and we don't think of the Raiders as having this great offensive line. 
We don't. If anything, we think of Tony Pollard probably having the best offensive line out of the, the guys we listed. 33 offensive explosive runs from Josh Jacobs. That's 14.1%, which is a crazy number. So then I got to thinking, well, what did the current Ravens do? Gus Edwards, 4% explosive runs. Justice Hill was a little bit better, 4.7. But then I got to Keaton Mitchell. And remember, Keaton Mitchell didn't play very much. And his limited snaps, Keaton Mitchell had an explosive run rate of 14.8% which is on par with what we just mentioned with Josh Jacobs. So now I'm with the thinking, is Derrick Henry really the answer? I don't think so. Is he your first choice? Definitely not. In my eyes, you kick the tires on Josh Jacobs first. Now, if you have to fall back on Derrick Henry, yeah, I understand. I understand. But my first choice is Josh Jacobs. You can pass Josh Jacobs with somebody else and, you know, until Keaton Mitchell gets gets his bearings back, probably mid-season or later, and you have that 14.8% with Josh Jacobs, 14.8%. You put them back there with Lamar and his explosive ability. Now you got an explosive backfield. And the thing you have to remember, our O-line is probably not going to be the greatest. So you have to have guys that's going to be able to do stuff on their own. You can't have backs that need it blocked up correctly. Ronnie Stanley's older and hurt. Morgan Moses is older and hurt. Tyler Linderbaum is solid. We good with Linderbaum. We don't know what our guard situations are going to be. So we're going to have to have backs that can make something out of nothing next year. And I think you look at Josh Jacobs can do that. I think um, Keith Mitch can do that when healthy, if he gets back healthy. And that's a huge if. That's a huge if. So I don't want to put anything on Keaton. I'm just throwing it out there because he had such of a high explosive run rate. And then you just, if you can get Jacobs, you build around it. If not, you got to kind of maybe go in the draft. But I just wanted to put some numbers out there with some names that have been mentioned as the Ravens flock won. So, again, that explosive run rate, I'm going to give you those numbers real quick again. Derrick Henry, which is the name that everybody's been talking about, 5.7. DeAndre Swift, 4.8. Tony Pollard, 4.3. Saquon Barkley, 4.8. But Josh Jacobs is 14.1. And again, I know he's hurt right now. Keenan Mitch Keaton Mitchell was 14.8. So that would be amazing to get Josh Jacobs and pair him with a healthy Keaton Mitchell on top of having Lamar back there too. That would be an amazing backfield to have now. So I just wanted to put this out there for you. You take what you want with these numbers and do what you will. But what I would like you to do is like the video. And if you have not subscribed, please do that. And uh, put what you think about this video in the comment section. And share it in the group chats, share it on Twitter, share it Facebook, Reddit, wherever you do that at. And, you know, the like goal for this video is 150 likes, trying to get the 10K subs before the draft. And so we got to make data-driven decisions with these free agency picks and with the draft and all that. And the way you do that is put your numbers with the film, then mesh that together because the film don't lie on top of the data. And that's what we're about over here film. So I appreciate you guys for coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. See y'all soon. Peace and love. I'm out.